reading from the book of Sirach. Wisdom sings her own praises. Before her own people, she proclaims her glory. In the assembly of the Most High, she opens her mouth. In the presence of his host, she declares her worth. In the midst of her people, she shall be exalted and shall be revered in the holy assembly. In the multitude of the elect shall she be praised, and among the blessed she shall be blessed. I spread out my branches like a terebinth, my branches so bright and so graceful. I bud forth the lights like the vine. My blossoms become fruit, fair and rich. I am the mother of the fair love, of fear, of knowledge, and of holy hope. In me is all grace, of way, and of truth. In me all hope of life and strength. Come to me, all you that yearn for me, and be filled with my fruits. You will remember me as sweeter than honey, better to have than the honeycomb. He who eats of me will hunger still. He who drinks of me will thirst for more. He who obeys me will not be put to shame. He who serves me will never fall. Verbum Domini.
reading from the letter of Paul to the Galatians. Brothers, while we were not yet of age, we were like slaves, subordinated to the elements of the world. But when the designated time had come, God sent forth his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to deliver from the law those who were subjected to it, so that we might receive our status as adopted sons. The proof that you are sons is the fact that God has sent forth into our hearts the spirit of his Son, which cries out, Abba, Father. You are no longer a slave, but a son, and the fact that you are a son makes you an heir by God's design. Verbum Domini Dominus vobiscum. Lexio sancti evangeli secundum lucam. Gloria The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. Upon arriving, the angel said to her, Rejoice, O highly favored daughter. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. She was deeply troubled by his words and wondered what his greeting meant. The angel went on to say to her, Do not fear, Mary. You have found favor with God. You shall conceive and bear a son and give him the name Jesus. Great will be his dignity, and he will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of David his father. He will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and his reign will be without end. Verbum Domini.
Earlier this week, in our daily gospel reading, we heard Jesus tell us about the parable of the mustard seed. That from this little tiny seed grows the largest of shrubs, of, of bushes. So what we see here is that the church, the kingdom of God, that is established by Jesus Christ, the kingdom of God who is Jesus Christ himself, begins with this tiny seed the church founded and grows and grows and grows. But it starts with very humble beginnings. Jesus, who is our great Savior, comes to save, comes to set us free, comes to give us life and life abundantly. But all of Jesus, all of this, all these great spiritual blessings of Christ come through a most humble mother, the blessed Virgin Mother, as we hear in the gospel today. And in all the great movements of the church, organizations, we see that this begins many times with the Blessed Virgin Mary. And this is also true of the Franciscan order. St. Francis had a deep devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mother of God. And as the order flourished as in its foundation, he, is, he, he built up the church of Our Lady of the Angels of Ports Juncula. And from there, from, from these early days in the Franciscan order, would, would, be, would begin this great movement of God. And you know, this is true for us as well, as individuals. We all need a devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mother. And St. Francis gives us a great example of this, that to fully live the life of grace, the life that Jesus Christ has called us to, this abundant life, we need the Blessed Virgin Mother by our side, as he had by his side. And so, my brothers and sisters, we, we look at this great feast day, this great solemnity. And St. Francis, uh, early in his conversion, he heard from the Lord, rebuild my church. Of course, you know, he started to rebuild the church of San Damiano, thought it literally. Then the church of St. Pietro. Eventually, he found the church of Our Lady of the Angels of Ports Juncula and started to rebuild that church as well, to fix it up, you know, um, clean it up. And then it was from, from right there again that Francis would spend many hours in prayer. He, according to the life of uh, the major life of St. Francis uh, of St. Bonaventure, it was there where he was once praying and cried out, to the Lord, of course, um, praying also, asking the intercession to the Blessed Virgin Mary. But he was so deeply troubled at one point that he said, you know, we, Lord, you know, he thought about the souls, about all the lost souls. And he, 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 he pondered much, you know, uniting this suffering to the suffering of Jesus. And he prayed and said, Lord, you know, this, of course, this is a holy place, but he desired that these souls be saved. So we asked the Lord that if an, a, a, a plenary indulgence could be given through this church. And the Lord, of course, directed him to the Holy Father. He asked the Holy Father at that time was Pope Honorius III, and Pope Honorius granted this to St. Francis. And, you know, this is an indulgence that still continues today. And we are all welcome to, uh, to, to, to do this indulgence. Of course, he, uh, the conditions of this would be to uh, visit a, a church in the name of Our Lady of the Angels, um, a Franciscan sanctuary, 
or even your own parish church with the intentions of honoring Our Lady of the Angels and the other conditions as well, which means receiving Holy Communion on this day, um, praying for the intentions of the Holy Father, praying to Our Father and a Hail Mary, and also uh, receiving the sacrament of penance 20 days before or 20 days after. So, you know, and also being, being free from uh, the attachments to, to sin, um, more than venial sins, or at least having the, a strong intention to do so. So this is something we're all uh, welcome to uh, part, partake of. And again, you know, going back to Francis's humble beginnings, it was there that there were, would be many early meetings of the Franciscan order. We call these chapters where the, where the, where the friars would come together, where they would discuss um, plans or what to do, places to go and evangelize. And um, it was also there where St. Francis uh, decided uh, to begin the Poor Clares. Uh, the, the, it was called the Poor Ladies at that time, where St. Clare, she was the first of, of the sisters. And then, of course, the, the Third Order uh, movement as well, the secular Franciscans would have its humble beginnings right there in the Church of Our Lady of the Angels of Portiuncula. And looking at uh, St. Francis' own devotion to the, the Blessed Mother, well, first of all, you know, St. Francis, his heart's desire was to be like Jesus, to be united with him, to live like him radically, and literally, St. Francis would often gaze on the cross and he would pray, as St. Paul says, he said, I desire to know nothing but Jesus Christ and him crucified. But St. Francis knew that growing in holiness and being holy, that the only way possible for this, of course, is, is, is having the Lord first, our greatest and first love, but also having a strong devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary a devotion he had throughout his, holy li his whole life. And so we could learn much from the example of St. Francis. But I think it's, I think it's safe to say that, that this is what the Lord intended for each and, one of, each and every one of us, that to live this life of grace fully, this inheritance we receive from the Lord through grace, to live out, his, uh, to live out the mysteries of his life, to walk in, in his life, to walk in his love. But only, we could receive this only to, to the fullest or more full if we have devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mother. Now, look at the life of Jesus. He comes into the world through her. She, who is the, the Immaculate Mary. And he receives his flesh through her, being conceived by the Holy Spirit, but the flesh coming through the Blessed Virgin Mother of God. And then she, she's with him his entire life. She's there, of course, of course, his holy birth, humble and holy birth in, in the manger. You know, we see uh, the, the next of her, the, the, the temple, you know, when Jesus um, is, uh, you know, he's, he's there in the, in the temple. The, <laughs> I'm already forgetting this, but uh, uh, when, when Jesus is, is taken to the temple for his... Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry about that, but uh, the presentation in the temple, yeah, so she's there for that, and then the finding of Jesus in the temple, and then, of course, through his whole um, uh, um, uh, hidden life, and then, and then she there as well in his public life, being present in his first miracle, and then we uh, see her again through uh, at the cross of Jesus the Lord and then at the resurrection, but there at the cross of the Lord where Jesus says, behold, your mother. You know, that's him giving her to all of us. So we know that is, that is, that is necessary that she be very much a part of our life, that we have her by her side, by our side, and that we have a very strong devotion to her. And... We see also, again, that she's there in the beginnings of, of everything. She's there in, in the very beginning of the church at Pentecost. You know? So look at the importance of having the Blessed Virgin Mother in our life. It is, it is absolutely necessary. And so, uh, my brothers and sisters, on this great day where we celebrate the feast, the, sol the solemnity 
of Our Lady of the Angels of, of Partiuncula. It's a great day to renew our own devotion to her, our love for her. Because all she, all she ever wants, all she ever desires for us is, to, is that we have a close relationship with Jesus, that we grow in the image of likeness of, of God. You know, this is her greatest desire for us, and she, she teaches us so well. She nurtures us by her prayers, by her assistance. And so let us, you know, look to her, look to her example, look to uh, the way she prays for us, the love she shows to Jesus, and the love she gives to each and every one of us. God bless you all.